Hi right, guys, it's KK4PYN again. Uh, I know I haven't posted a video in a while. Kind of busy with work and uh, trying to do some stuff around the house here, but the video I posted about my NF MFJ tuner has gained a little bit of attention and um, the repair that I did to it. So this is the model 993B. And if you go back and watch uh, the original video I did on it, it was still working, but it had no frequency counter display. Um, and it was doing some other strange stuff. Still worked, but no frequency counter. The problem was this chip right here um, was burned up. It's uh, 74 HC something teen. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. You'd, you'd have to look back in the original video. I'll flip this over and see if we can, I mean, you'll know what you're looking at, because it's, see if I can get some better light on here. You can see the traces were burned up pretty bad there. Um, I dug the whole thing out, and basically go by the data sheet, as you can see I've ordered the dip version of that chip, because getting an SMD part back on there is just not going to happen. So I ordered the dip version of that chip, and going with a combination of the data sheet for the chip and the um, schematics for this unit, which are freely available online. Um, in fact, I think they're on the MFJ's website, and if you have your manual, they're probably in the back of that too. Um, this circuit board works on a couple different tuners, the 991B, the 993B, the 994B, etc., etc., so... Um, this may solve this issue in multiple different tuners. Also back here in the back, there's a, a high value resistor that was across the input here, and I had to replace that. Um, I didn't have the exact one that I needed on hand, so I just did two in series. Um, and don't quote me, but I think they were like pretty low value resistors so here's the actual chip uh, sorry about the this is just my cell phone here let me get in there and read that with a I'm just gonna pan away for a second it's a SN74 HC T14N um, Uh, it's a TI part. I don't remember where I got it. I think it's a pretty commonly available chip. Uh, I might have got it on Mauser or DigiKey. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. There you go. Um, that's the exact same part number as the SMD version. It's just the dip version. I just put it in the socket, obviously. It makes it easier for soldering and uh, put it on one of these little perf boards is designed for dip breakout because you will need um, a couple different pads for each one um, but it works perfectly and the repair is complete and this tuner I, I don't have an HF antenna hooked up right now that I could really show you, put it back together, or anything like that, but it works great. I haven't had a problem with it. Um, and, uh, you know, readout's accurate. I was worried about inductance or anything like that going from an SMD part to having all these wires strung all over the place, but it hasn't had a problem. And back here, see if I can get a better shot of this resistor. For you guys, there you go. That's in the back. The resistor that burned up originally was right here, and uh, I just scraped some copper away on that side, and then they hooked up in series with this big resistor right here, which was still okay. Um, I metered that and it was fine, uh, but it burned those up. It's probably from lightning strike or. Maybe an overpower, I don't know, you can see where I <laughs> um, 
burn the that socket. But anyway, it still works. Um, it works good. And I'll give you guys a better view of the actual repair here. This was just kind of a quick throw together. It's not my best work. Um, oh yeah, there's also some diodes here. Uh, I think they're just little shockies or something like that. Once you look at the data sheet for the chip, um, it basically breaks out exactly like it does. I got the values for these diodes off of the schematic for this tuner. So, they, if, I did this repair a couple years ago, but if my memory serves me correct, I had to replace these because they were burned up off the side here, or the trace blew off or something like that. But you can see, um, let me zoom in a little bit more here. Again, sorry for this horrible cell phone video. Um, just wanted to do a quick reply. You can see where the original traces were for that chip. It's like a 14 pin chip. It was a big SMD chip. Um, these capacitors were still good. I checked everything with a curve tracer. Um, you know, and went through and made sure that everything that was in line with all this stuff, like this chip feeds its output to um, this chip here to drive the frequency counter. Uh, basically, I just went through the schematic, looked at the value for all these capacitors, um, made sure everything looked normal, and replaced what I needed to replace. This trace right here, uh, right here, that comes in is the actual trace that goes back to where that resistor is. That comes right off the input. Um, this whole thing comes off the input here from the transmitter. So um, that's what actually feeds that chip. So thankfully, where were we? We were up here. But thankfully this little capacitor here was still good. Um, if not, they're just little surface mount capacitors are easy to change out. Um, all this was good. You can see I actually bridged across those two just to get a better solder joint. Um, it's really hard to explain anymore. I mean it's pretty simple. There's only three or four wires you need to get hooked up um, to the actual chip. There's this one that goes, you know, just go pin by pin and see what you have burned up and what it wasn't working and that's if you know if it's not working you can see there's only one two three yeah there's only four wires that come off this chip that go to the board so it's not a big deal this um this diode here where'd it go um if you look at the schematic came all the way over here i was going to try and hook this up to the back of the perf board but I realized if I did that I wouldn't be able to flip it over if I ever needed to get to it. Plus, you know, the hardest part was just getting all the pin out right and getting each wire going to the right place. Um, if you're dyslexic, it can, be, can become an issue flipping it backward and forward. So, but that's it. Um, not going to beat a dead horse. It's, it, it works. It's, it's done fine. I didn't pay anything for this tuner because... Somebody gave it to me, it, they, it didn't work, um, and it, it tunes fine, it, all the functions work, um, all the tests, uh, if you go into the menu, uh, all, it passes all the auto tests that it does, so it's okay. And uh, yeah, if you're having a problem with your frequency counter, check that chip. If, it, if it's not burned up, you know, you might be able to just replace it with a new one on there. If it is, these breakout boards are cheap. You can get them anywhere. This is an old, old eBay one, or uh, Radio Shack one. You can see it was still made in Japan back when Radio Shack was good stuff. So, all right, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, again, I know 
can't see it up and running but it's it's working fine I, I may actually have a video of this thing running after I fixed it so but that's all there is to it guys um, replace that 7400 chip and away you go it, uh, total repair if you don't have any of this stuff on hand the resistors are you know total repair is like less than 10 bucks so it's a good tuner it works good I enjoy using it and um, it was worth spending the two or three hours that it took me to figure all that out so like I said leave any questions if you have in the comments and uh, you know I can try and help you out um, if I feel motivated I'll put a link to the the data sheet and the uh, schematic in there but you probably already have it so not a big deal but that's it that's all I did and it works all right you guys have a good one I'll try and post more videos soon. It's been super busy like normal. Real life. 73 guys.